ladies and gentlemen. Nice to speak about Himalab for the archaeologists. I am not archaeologist, but my father was. And uh, 17 years of my life, I also took care of archaeological site. But today, uh, I will try to describe you what we do for heritage uh, in Ukraine in general, uh, having experience in uh, site management, but also in the ministry work and now as NGO. Uh, coalition so uh, when year before last year i talked to icom uh, um, representatives uh, at general conference uh, conference was uh, about future of museums and technologies and resilience uh, sustainability this this is what we did before and what we try to do in Ukraine, including post-Soviet realities. But now we have a war. So the question is how to link this um, and could we link this development directions with present situation? Uh, and can our heritage uh, help us in this war? So I will tell you my personal uh, story, uh, which starts from Tustan. Uh, it's archaeological site in Carpathians. My father, Mikhail Rushko, uh, researched this site for uh, 33 years till his death. Um, and it's unique because now we have only cliffs cliffs, but there are more than 4,000 channels, which help us to understand uh, wooden construction of fortress in Middle Ages, not only in the plan, but also in its vertical structure. And uh, after measurements and then archaeological excavations, um, my father created a graphical reconstruction uh, uh, precisely as as it could be in two dimensions and but also with vertical structure uh, after his death i took care about uh, the site more like doing 3d uh, reconstruction uh, by present technologies museums uh, but also we try to do this site popular and uh, now it's one of the top touristic destinations uh, preserving old place but also having good infrastructure and middle ages festivals uh, and uh, museums about uh, about this place uh, also we uh, preserve not only the uh, site uh, itself where fortress was but also uh, surroundings natural landscape but also cultural landscape we see this uh, agriculture um, uh, landscape uh, formed uh, historically and also traditional boiko architecture so it's like uh, buffer zone before the main monument but also uh, like eco museum around uh, also we also we uh, try to use immersive technologies uh, for сагадки неймовірної фортеці відтепер this fortress. So we uh, did AR when you can use your phone uh, to see on site. Пізнай uh, історію через вражаючу гру Тори у середньовіччя. Торкнус до минулого. Артефакти фортеці Тустань. Освітньо-ігрова PR платформа, яка вражає. Fortress inside as it was. 
having only cliffs on the real side. Then came challenges. During the revolution of dignity in 2014, uh, we as museum workers also were part of this actions, um, but we uh, started Maidan Museum, which now is a national uh, memorial complex. And uh, we tried to preserve uh, remembrance, memory of these events and new quality of society. But second response was I came to the Ministry of Culture as a head of museum department and tried to understand uh, the whole picture of museums in Ukraine. And we understood that we have a huge post-Soviet um, management system uh, incapable in many things and many things should be done from the beginning starting from inventories, a list of museums, uh, creating communication with regions. And so we, we tried to do this and to, the war was already in 2014. So we also tried to understand what can we do uh, when the system is not ready to this war, what can we save actually. Uh, then present full scale invasion in 2022 uh, with Igor Poshevailo from Maidan Museum. We created uh, HERI, Heritage Emergency Response Initiative uh, for quick emergency response. And first we did everything. We tried to supply museums with wrapping materials, try to evacuate some collection started uh, documentation expeditions uh, but then uh, my part of team we focused more on uh, data infrastructure on um, digitization and expeditions for documenting uh, damages from the field uh, as a, a real uh, and truthful data about what's what's happening so, uh, HIMO, Ukrainian Heritage Monitoring Lab, appeared, uh, and we are focused uh, on, on this uh, documenting and putting this into uh, data infrastructure. So, as for now, we started with uh, like projects supported by World Monument Fund and uh, SCRI and SAR. And thanks to this first uh, half year projects from uh, October to March, uh, we developed a team with architects who could document on site, but also with IT specialists who built uh, data infrastructure and um, many people who did verification and manage management of these projects. So now, um, the team is not only in Lviv, where I came from, but also in Kyiv, in Kharkiv. We have a local team who acts constantly, not as mobile team uh, going to, to east and south to document, but uh, on, on, on site. And also we are forming a south team for work in Odessa, Kherson, and Mykolaiv. So we are also not only like activists, but we are representatives of institutions which exist for a long time. And uh, so we, we can um, provide sustainability in spite of uh, projects and uh, uh, grants money, but also as institutions. So it's like the Tustin Site Museum, NGO, for museum development, uh, the Polytechnic uh, University, Architectural Department, Institute for Geographical in Informational Systems. Uh, what we do? So uh, we do damage assessment for uh, stabilizing of monuments and uh, for further conservation and renewal. 
um also 3d models but partly uh, not not for each objects uh, also uh, second direction is forensic heritage documentation we uh, document uh, war crimes against humanity and cultural heritage and due to international uh, methodologies uh, as forensic heritage documentation from scry um, as it was done in Iraq, in Mosul, uh, for further criminal proceedings against Russia. And also we do uh, more than damage assessment, we do heritage inventory, because I will see, show you uh, its lack. Uh, also we provide military forces with data for planning operations, uh, trying to preserve uh, objects, especially archaeological. So uh, processes like we select sites, try to understand is this damage is real from news, and then after preparation go to expedition. Uh, but then we understood that uh, it took it takes a lot of time to document deeply and sometimes when you come uh, too late uh, some parts are renewed already windows are already back and you, you have no traces of damages anymore so we created a quick verification expeditions uh to do quick verification uh, when we can uh, visit 20 30 sites per day and then decide where to go um, longer but then a very important part is uh, post-processing of materials and to put them and to to put them into the database for few future use and um, sharing for those who needs so as for april we documented uh, more than 400 sites in uh, so in western ukraine we tested forensic heritage documentation and uh, here we uh, have the damaged objects where we could go and uh, as for now we also visited flooded territories in kherson region uh, and Odessa after missiles. So as for now, we have um, 750 objects visited. So mostly it's architecture and we uh, dream, we plan, we prepare us to start uh, to work with archaeological uh, archaeolo um, experts too because it's quite uh, other type of objects and uh, to, to gather this, this together. So um, we document uh, monuments due to ICRO methodology, which lets uh, to have an uh, overview, a picture of uh, what's the most damaged, what's not, and to, to do quick decisions for future investigations or stabilizing. So um, ICRO methodology is a number of pages which can be filled on site. Then we put this also in database and we can classify these objects and see structural damages, uh, not only like um, exteriors or uh, some light uh, scratches uh also we do 3d documenting we started actually from this as you see borodyanka shelf was famous rooster and we did this with photogrammetry but uh, it takes some time especially laser scanning uh, so uh, we do only on those places where uh, really needed and actually forensic heritage documentation and ICROM should be done as soon as possible. So we focus on speed to do this documentation first, and then when we can also 3D. But why 3D is um, needed? 
you see Vyazil Kachach, and for example, in May uh, 2022, we did photogrammetry from drone. Then in October, uh, thanks to Bruno Deslandes, we did uh, laser scanning uh, also inside and the whole building very uh, detailed. Uh, we could see even the process of ruining, how it's moving. But while thinking about how can it be preserved and thoughts of ministry or donors, um, before winter it fell down, actually. Uh, 3D model is the only thing we have now about this church. So uh, this is example where We did both photogrammet uh, photogrammetry from drone from above and also laser scanning from inside because uh, blow it blew up from inside. Um, and uh, then it was put together and it's it's good for architects, conservators for further work. It's church in Lukashivka, Chernihiv region. But documentation is not the only challenge and uh, very important is to, to work with data after uh, to make them accessible and uh, to preserve them. So our data infrastructure has like two contours uh outer is uh like to gather everything we can it's like gis where we have more than a hundred thousand objects there but then we clean data and uh verify them and reach with meta metadata and we have like internal contour which is like clean and truthful so for uh, this gathering every uh, of everything we use a geographical informational system with many many years uh, layers uh, not only damages but all heritage which is in access for example we have a registry of two and a half thousand uh, museums and uh, official uh, 19 thousand uh, monuments uh, due to uh, Ministry of Culture register, we put this manually in in database. Uh, and very huge work should be done for verification. We understood that. Uh, so, firstly, there are no. Uh, official machine readable register of heritage in Ukraine. So we put this uh, PDF without coordinates manually in database. But uh, there are many lists which are not uh, not um, with, with different names. So the, the same objects can be uh, in five or seven uh, different names in uh, different lists. And it should be put together, not to duplicate, because something uh, you can link to this and something to this, and it's like a chaos. So this another work uh, in office for uh, verification this uh, data and uh, adding uh, metadata to these objects like coordinates or necessary information is this monument or not to make some searchable clean registry for usage and actually two objects in this uh, our internal registry we link all other information about this from expeditions archive photos 3ds uh, Icron form, so everything is linked to this unique ID of the object. And another uh, right part of the slide, you see, uh, for example, um, uh, two and a half thousand of museums are um, 
on the map and yellow are under occupation at the beginning of the war in 2022 so red are since 14 occupied and yellow partly are deliberated already but you can see that 400 museums were or still are temporarily occupied and uh, we should check each each object so as with uh, immobile heritage also we understand that each object should be checked which was under occupation because new information from use is not not enough uh, to believe uh, another thing is interesting that most of this museums on the yellow territory more than 400 are museums about red glory uh, soviet army so that's why we have actually this uh, this war of census uh, internal clean database uh, has special tools and infrastructure for cloud storage and such instruments like for doing this verification and registration for planning of expeditions so to to help arch arch architects and uh, our team users to to uh, to link and to do this uh, data based storage quickly after after um, expedition to download everything in proper um, places and then we can have overall picture of how many damages we have in each region or or city and the stage of this we you can see all expeditions we had with the list of these objects and which data are linked to to the, specifically uh, this objects and to download to 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 see uh, this data but also we understand that our data are needed uh, for for usage immediately just right now so uh, for some uh, charges uh, architects couldn't wait for our proceedings of materials in months so we created a website heritage in ua which is becoming a platform uh, where we uh, put the list of objects we were in and uh, pointing also that for example here we have a chrome form or 3D model, and you can register there and download, and it helps to share data for those who need it uh, quickly. Of course, it's uh, open data, not those for uh, forensic heritage or that are not that, that could not be uh, widely open. But this war is against us against our heritage in total so we want not only to to preserve heritage and to survive but uh, to to do something bigger to to do what we didn't for 30 years of independence to find uh, the proper role of heritage in society uh, as a as a driver for for uniting of us uh, and understanding the roots and identity but we have a number of challenges after soviet times and before the war management so actually we have no actual statistics uh, we have different numbers of official statistics uh, how many museums of immobile heritage uh, do we have but uh, not not uh, actual and uh, it's a challenge because uh, what 
how can you preserve something when you do not have the list even of museums not speaking about collections in these museums uh, for example in mobile heritage we have officially almost 11000 on site architectural archaeological monuments of national or local uh, meaning importance uh, but ministry has uh, 140 thousands of immobile heritage objects uh, declared they are not published yet but it's a huge quantity so you can understand uh, yellow are two and a half thousand of museums and green in the Parisian region it's example of those part of this 140 thousand uh, lists so how how many objects do we have uh, and it's a challenge because when we give uh, the, this to military forces uh, they should have some uh, priority they could not preserve everything and as for now uh, we can have monument as wooden church of 18th century but also monument of uh, soviet soldier of the, of the same important or importance in the list so the question of what's our real heritage is another question besides database digitization could uh, solve many of these problem, problems but we have to answer a number of questions for, for this uh, which data we need uh, well um do they appear who generates them uh, who uses and so on so uh, it's a very complex problem uh, and we believe that only data infrastructure approach is uh, the answer uh, not to do one software for example for everybody but um it's important to have rules and standards and uh, so complex solution with hardware and software with uh, trainings and uh, uh, organization support so with this uh, we created a vision we started one project with unesco last year and we created a vision of possible um infrastructure when many actors who create data as museums archives archaeologists uh, 3d modelers can create and share data with special standards like Purana, Europeana or Carare uh, in machine readable way to make this interoperable uh, to open for white society but also for special uh, tasks during the war for stolen objects uh, lists or uh, for conservators and linking to official ministries register of immobile heritage or museum collections register uh, so well, what we do in part of war documenting we do in this vision and dream to unite many actors in this field what else also we work with museums uh, anti in anti way uh, preserving inventory books but also to create a file digitization center where the, which can work for many museums as for now it's in view but then we uh, dream and plan to multiply in other regions so not uh, so to raise capacity of museums to create this data and this center is a kind of competence and expertise uh, to do different things uh, not only one type of objects for many museums constantly and digital accounting system also we understand that we uh, should the war is unusual and nobody was ready to this not only in ukraine i believe uh, and we we have sudden challenges and 
need to respond as soon as possible. So we, after them damaged, damages, we did expedition with military forces to document this, uh, if possible, and did special report for this. Also, uh, to present a methodology, because very important is to, to develop experience and international methodologies which we use to uh, set uh, them to present realities uh, and we try to also to share this new experience and skills and changes done so we did conference for this in april uh, with, uh, you can see the whole recording of this about different internal things we do and uh, in also we did a uh, report about details uh, everything you can see on this uh, site heritage in ua and other direction is forensic heritage and we was together with cry and the conflict observatory we did monitoring of uh, looted museums and presented the results on conference with uh, ICOM together with the Ukrainian ICOM committee about looted museums. And of course, there are people around museums uh, which are kidnapped. And it's also the question. Uh, also, we provide military forces with data. Uh, Delta is a software for which they use for military planning, but they created also separate layer for heritage um, to understand where important objects, especially archaeological, for example, uh, not to damage if possible during the um, war actions. So, and they take uh, this data from our database in machine readable way through API. And another layer they do have uh, for war crimes, for looted museums and damaged objects, because it's like a software where you can understand from where which missile came and what happened, not after, but during the situation. And actually, um, it's very important to work with military forces for uh, salvage and documenting of heritage, because uh, as civilians, we have uh, very limited access, especially uh, near the war zone. That's why creating of CPP division is very important for us and uh, uh, finishing with creation of Blue Shield Ukraine and uh, expeditions with military forces were very effective um, uh, thanks to access they provide and the help they can. So uh, here you can see uh, our platform where you try to download data and reports and it will be developed with new uh, directions. Our Facebook page and also uh, we try to, uh, to act as networking, so capacity depends on expertise and people who can help, uh, not only professionally, but also in management. That's why we invite to, to contact and partnership. And back, back to the future. 
uh, I believe that we should think about followers who who will who could uh, continue what we do and that's why it's very important not only to not only to do but to describe and to to work with with fire in the eyes so database it's about hundreds thousands of objects but actually for me personally and i hope for everybody uh, every each hell has its own object which is very important for him and uh, we take care of that's why we should think not only about uh, exploring not only about institutions but how it can be sustainable in time so heritage tourism approach uh, is important um, creating clusters uh, in cooperation with uh, museums uh, government uh, business and local community uh, finding some sustainable financial models also are very important because it's about life it's about importance of heritage and uh, that it will be needed after us to i hope and now now we i have the feeling that we are trying to to build some plane during the flight not only to to work with uh, the war uh, consequences but also trying to build system we didn't help before. Thank you for attention. And maybe questions. Thank you very much. That was that was excellent. Very very inspiring. Um, I'm looking around the audience here. I'll throw it open to questions. If anybody has any. Anyone like to? Yeah, there's a lady up there. We'll just bring the microphone up to her. That's all. Can you hear that, Vasil? Did she, did she no, just... No, no, yes. yes. Best test. Just a second, we're, we're having difficulty with the microphone. Thanks again. Yeah. Are you hear, can you hear me now? Echoing. In. Yes, I do. That you can... So, um, um, Back to, I have one question, whether you have uh, developed how to monitor what to monument. Oh, sorry, but I, I, I hear half of words, but half uh, not. You can't hear properly. Uh, yes, maybe if you ask, if you want to come down or yeah, if you okay. want a question, I can, um, yeah, that's probably the best thing. Yeah. Or maybe you can repeat uh, in microphone. She, she's coming now, so it's probably easier. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. Uh, again, <laughs> thanks for this uh, splendid presentation and congratulations for all the strategy you have developed. Uh, in uh, fighting and in saving anything you can. Uh, I have a question uh, concerning uh, uh, whether uh, you have also developed some uh, strategy or, 
or uh, uh, developed thoughts about how to monitor and how to act in uh, territories that are currently still occupied by, by the Russian army. Uh, looted museums where, for instance, uh, uh, Russian experts are hired to rebuild or to, with a promise to rebuild the monuments and so on and so on, which is actually against the Geneva Convention, but of course they, they do not uh, see this and they do not act that. So uh, do you have any thoughts or power to act also in the occupied territories? Thanks for the question. Uh, actually, our power is in our actions, so we are not <laughs> the ministry, right? But we try to cooperate and to share what we can and cooperate where we can. So there are a few uh, directions of this. Uh, on the level of monitoring, of distant monitoring from news, we uh, try to monitor everything. But as at the beginning of the project a year ago, we used a website of ministry as a main source because a person who did this uh, monitoring uh, did it very good and precisely. Uh, so we trusted this and do, didn't duplicate and just took information about objects in the region and then went to this damaged objects into the expedition on uh, the occupied territories. Uh, but ministry doesn't do this anymore, doesn't publish this anymore. Uh, so we are developing this monitoring system by ourselves. Uh, in combination with our database and our knowledge, uh, knowledge about uh, objects. Uh, about uh, publishing, uh, I believe that uh, it should be like closed information and we should be very accurate with uh, heritage, informing about heritage on damaged territories, especially museums because it will be more dangerous for them when we will talk loudly about, uh, for example, showing the list of whole museums or um, actions uh, which could be done. So I think uh, public silence is more important. And of course, we cannot, we can have some information from uh, people, but uh, it should be also very um, uh, accurate and not, not officially because they are still there and uh, it's danger for them. People, people are about everything. But for example, as for looted museums, we did this on uh, looted territories uh, about facts um, of looting, uh, conflict observatory, SCRI, and uh, cultural heritage monitoring lab from Virginia Museum uh, provided us with information from news and from satellite uh, imagery. And we tried to prove this uh, from uh, like on site or through contacts uh, here in Ukraine. So this combination is very, very important. And uh, actually joining forces is very important because there are many initiatives who do this, but um, not to duplicating and to, to, to join information uh, would bring much more information. But as, as for now, we have uh, visited more sites and were on the site of ministry as for today uh, about damaged objects. Um, and we cannot visit this even um, border of fire is not accessible for us even for military uh, so no not even after uh, after missiles in different parts of ukraine uh, not always we can reach this 
but for example when drama theater was was uh, stroke we did quick report on this but it's not on occupied territory thank you thank you very much um any other questions yes there's somebody coming down now for another question so thank you for the presentation I was wondering, I know that there are some archaeological artifacts in black market for, from U Ukraine. And does those items come from the looted museum or are also archaeological sites being looted? Uh, both. As far as we know, uh... Our expedition was military couldn't reach all sites after flooding, after them ruining. But black archaeologists did in Kherson region. And second, in museums also, I think it's complicated. So we see patterns from Russian side. Uh, and part of this. Uh, became like black archaeology from museums but also some looted collections are like uh, persons from very high level told them to do this so it's like on purpose it's not like for markets and for auction but uh, other thing is um, black archaeology in Ukraine was also before the war and it was not solved this problem so it's a long uh, problem uh, which exists long before and maybe it's also from previous times because exactly many many people do this and uh, um, government does not solve this problem as for now properly and effectively. Thank you. That's just such a terrible, terrible shame. Um, any other questions? Hmm? I just have one question, which maybe hopefully is a little more positive, and then perhaps that might be a good point to stop. Um, with, we're coming up on two o'clock. Um, I was wondering about the uh, records that you've um, made and the, the data that you've collected uh, and wondering how you envisage or how you think that you might be able to use that in the future in terms of uh, repairing and restoring the, the buildings um, and structures that have been damaged. Your thank you piece. thank you for the question uh, it is used already so we started to share this just after first expeditions a year ago uh, but you know it's not so like uh, hierarchically so officials are mostly uh, busy because of uh, the war because of very urgent uh, um, routine and uh, on places they have no um, neither capacity nor money for uh, restoration so as for now uh, i think uh, um, mostly donors like what monument funds uh, scry uh, trying uh, are trying to help to do some stabilizing things um, but in future, of course, we work for this. Um, we believe that data, not only data about damages, but for example, Skovrodeniuka Museum, we have, uh, as it was before the damage, not only after the damage. And it will help not only to 
uh, to reconstruct, but also to rethink. Because uh, as we thought about library in Chernihiv, a very nice building uh, damaged. Um, maybe some some damages sh should be shown through like in museum interpretation way in different kind of material uh, of uh, the wall or like you know and other other direction is to rethink the usage of this uh, post-soviet libraries or uh, folk houses uh, which were created during soviet times for example and which are not about 21st century uh, so we can uh, see what was before soviet union there so i believe that when you have database and when you everything is linked and you can put layers on layers of your knowledge you can uh, do investigations of of ukrainian heritage uh, i believe the world is more interested and will be in uh, recent times and you can put some uh, census identity or some uh, research or um, some uh, development of educational programs on the basis of this data so it can be used in different ways when you can trust this information and when you do this constantly and linking everything together and putting in database for for years mm -hmm.